Testing. Oh, come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus. Oh, he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be magnified. He's worthy to be praised. Come on, begin to magnify him. The song says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. Come on, can we just take a few minutes to exalt his name? Come on, his name is above every name. Demons tremble at the sound of the name. Can we just say his name right now? Jesus. Come on, can we say it collectively? Jesus. Come on, can we say it one more time? Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, bless his wonderful name. Hallelujah. We are so grateful for this time and this season to praise him. The hour cometh that now is that the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And for that reason, we're going to go into this song. It says, Welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide. In the praises of your people, so we lift our hands as we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name. Oh. Into this place. Yeah. Come on, just welcome me in this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. Into this broken vessel. You desire in the praises of your people. As we lift our heart, as we offer up this praise unto your name, come on, let's give him praise right there. We lift our hearts 
as we offer up this praise. Your name. Come on, let's say it again. Oh, we welcome you into this place.
but he's king of kings and he's lord of lords. He reigns forevermore. Come on, let's exalt his name. He's a wonder in our souls. Come on, begin to give him glory. We glorify your name. We magnify your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. They say love is what it does. If you love him, praise him. Hallelujah. you to rest to your feet as we go into the book of Joshua. It's going to be in uh, chapter 4, amen. It'll be on the 
screens here. We're going to start at 1, and then we're going to make our way to 10, and then I'm going to start. You're going to repeat after me, and then when we get to 10, we're going to read together. Amen? Amen. Amen. And it came to pass, when all the people were clean passed over Jordan, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take you twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe of man. And command ye them, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones, and ye shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where ye shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the twelve men, whom he had prepared of the children of Israel, out of every tribe of man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord, your God, into the midst of Jordan, and take ye up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. That is may be a sign among you. And when your children ask their father in time to come, say, What mean ye by these stones? Then ye shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it passed over Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off. And these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. And the children of Israel did so as Joshua commanded, and took up twelve stones out of the midst of Jordan, as the Lord spake unto Joshua, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, and carried them over with them unto the place where they lodged, and laid them down there. And Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests, which bear the Ark of the Covenant, stood. And they are there until this day. Let us read this last and final verse together. For the priests, which bear the Ark, stood in the midst of Jordan until everything was finished that the Lord commanded Joshua to speak unto the people. According to all that Moses commanded, Joshua and the people tasted and passed over. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and the readers of his great word. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. The word is so rich and relevant all the time. Amen. At this time, our courtesy Gill is going to come in their own way to welcome you and continue this worship experience. Amen. To God be the glory. Well, good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, church. Good morning. There we go, there we go, there we go. To Pastor Smith, Sister Leading Lady Patricia Smith, to this beautiful congregation, to our viewing audience on YouTube, Facebook, and all around the world, welcome. Do we have any first-time family visiting with us on today? Do we have any first-time family visiting with us on today? If you don't mind, would you please stand for our first time there we go, young man. Let's give him a round of applause. Amen. Thank you, friends, with Melvin Lloyd and Donovan. Good stuff, good stuff. As I look about this beautiful, beautiful congregation, I see some ushers sitting in on today in their beautiful adorned colors. So if you don't mind, ushers, well, I'd like to just recognize you. Would you please stand so that we can give you a round of applause to our ushers sitting in on today. announcements are as follows. For all of our 2024 graduates, kindergarten through college, there will be a recognition ceremony on next Sunday, June the 2nd. Would you please see Mother Janie Wright for information, and her email address is Janie P. Wright, that's J as in jump, A-N-I-E-P as in Paul, Wright, W-R-I-G-H-T, at AOL.com. Her telephone number is 404 
5560 and Mother Wright would like to have that information by no later than May the 30th. Thank you. Also, men, there will be a men's day meeting on next Sunday immediately after church service as we prepare for our Jazz on the Lawn, which is scheduled for June the 15th, and Men's Day is actually scheduled for June the 23rd. So men, please attend that very important meeting as we prepare for our Men's Day for 2024. And that's courtesy of Brother Anthony Bradley and Brother Gary Skelton. And again, I'd like to share with you my thought for the week. As the beautiful music plays in the background. If you need somebody to speak to your heart, the Lord God Almighty will. Thank you. Good morning, church. Today is a special day, and as our Courtesy Guild member, the chair of the Courtesy Guild, Deacon Javaris Bird, has stated, we have our ushers, our combined usher board, that are dressed in their summer shirts that we want to give God blessings for. I'm going to ask those ushers all to come down at this time so we can pray over the anointing, the anointing of their shirts. Amen? And I want you to know the pastor has one, too. You will be seeing me sporting that shirt. I, I thank God for it. And we want to thank each one of my. And I hope you have been noticing the consistency of our usher board. We want to thank those leaders of the usher board that are overseeing this. We thank God for Dr. Joanna Sellers, Mother Dorothy Gates, and Deacon Gary Hardgrove, and also we want to remember our sister Brittany Parker, and all the other members that are part of the usher board. You Amen. all are fantastic. Amen. 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 We want to give everyone a chance to get situated. Situated, situated. Let us pray over this anointed shirt that are before us. Heavenly Father, we still believe in giving back everything that you have given unto us. We still believe, God, that anything that comes into your house should be anointed. And Lord, these are the doorkeepers in the house of the Lord. David stated that he'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than it was the tent of the wickedness. So, God, we thank you for these ushers. We thank you, God, for their unification. We ask you not only to bless these shirts, but have thy favor upon their hearts, not only upon their hearts, but their servitude. We give you all the glory. It has been asked, it has been heard, and it has been done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You look Amen. At this time, Reverend Jamis will be coming forth with our prayer of covering. So if you decide you want to stay up here for a prayer of covering, just come a little closer so others can join you all that desire to come down. But it's the prayer of covering for Reverend Amen. Jamis to give at this time. Amen. Hallelujah. blessed to be a blessing and if you want to you don't have to I don't bite you can come on up to the altar you can stand up you can sit down whatever attitude of prayer that you want to assume is appropriate to do now I don't take it lightly to come before the throne of mercy and I'm going to pour it out to you as it's been poured unto me amen as we go before the throne of, of mercy it's uh, it's prayer time Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I say thank you. Yes, Lord. Thank you because you've been so good. Better than I've been to myself. Better than I've been to so many others. You have been so good to me and I'm grateful Lord you set aside today for the prayer covering for those who are in your midst that are here to worship through prayer we say thank you Lord we bless these families represented here today 
With so much going on all around us and on the inside of us, Lord, we just ask for peace as peace surpasses all understanding. So Lord, we just thank you today because guess what? We know you're here at Antioch East. We know you're in the hospital with my cousin and others. We know you're at home with those listening in. We know you're on the football field or the, the beach or wherever we are in the car, deliberating and conversating. You're everywhere, Lord. You're omnipotent and we are so glad that you are the same God today and yesterday, and you are everywhere that we are, and we're grateful. So Lord, today I just come petitioning on behalf of these families here, near, and everywhere. They're pouring out their heart to you saying, Lord, I'm going to the doctor this week. You're gonna have some answers, and I want them to come from you. Lord, I start a new job this week. Help me to be able to do and, and go and grow and glow when they see me come in. Lord, my, my daughter or my son coming home from school. Lord, let them find refuge in my house. Lord, I got my son or my daughter, my friend, going on these roads and highways and byways. Be a fence all around them. People driving all everywhere. Lord, protect my family. That's our cry, Lord. We also have other petitions like, I want you to work on my friend, or I want you to work on my spouse, or my partner, or my mom, or my dad. But Lord, change those words around to, I want you to work on me, Lord. Help me get my work and my mouth and my spirit right so I can do and be more like you. Lord, we thank you today for worship, the experience like no other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you for these mothers and these deacons and these ushers and yes, yes. the choir and visitors and yes, those who come from near and far. Lord, we thank you. Thank you. We thank you for the entrepreneurial spirit yes. that exists all over this place. Lord, we thank you for the under shepherd. Yes. Yes. You know all about them. Yes, Lord. Reverend Dr. Michael A. Smith, a man after God's own heart. We bless him today. We lift him up today. We lift up his lovely wife, leading Lady Patricia, Zach, and Caleb, and all the fruit that comes from the vine. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for little Zach and those who are part of the Smith bloodline. Lord, we thank you. Because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't even have an under shepherd. So Lord, we cry out, thank you for the man of God in this place. Thank you for the melodious music that just sets the atmosphere so that we can continue our worship and give the respect and the honor and the glory and the gratitude that we forget about when we be getting our blessings every time we look around. So, Lord, we thank you for Memorial Day, a time to celebrate and have memorial in our hearts and our minds. Lord, we thank you for traveling mercies. We thank you for new opportunities and new days and new fresh anointing that you provide. Lord, we, if we had 10,000 tongues, we wouldn't be able to thank you enough for all that you've done for us. Lord, before we culminate this worship and prayer and covering. I just want to be a little selfish and thank you for my grandmama. A wise woman who prayed for me when I was a little girl. All the way up until this point. Over 104 years you've given her life to be able to pray for so many more people other than me. We thank you for Mother Leach and all the other mothers who prayed so hard for this generation so that we can rise up and show ourselves approved to you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you in advance for the good news you're going to provide in our lives. So as we go back to our seats, let us say hallelujah and that you are the mighty God. You are the king of kings. You are the prince of peace. 
You are everything. So, Lord, we just thank you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. It is in your great name we give you all the honor and the glory. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Say that one more time. Oh, how I love Jesus. Come on. Oh, how I love Jesus. Singing, oh, oh, how I love Jesus. We sing, oh, 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 oh. because. To me, he is so wonderful. He is. So wonderful. To me, he is so wonderful. To me. Say it together as as unity. Oh, how I love Jesus! Oh, how I love! How I love Jesus! How I love Jesus! Because He first. Say without the music, oh, how I love him, yeah, yeah. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, I love Jesus. Because. Clap your hands if you love it. Hallelujah.
first love me. I love that rendition. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We're going to continue our worship through giving, and we're going to have our um, own Deacon Terrell's going to come and give us the offertory prayer, but I just want to share with you, I know some of you may or may not have your program with the QR code, but the QR code should be up on the screen there. You know, some of us in the digital era would like to just scan and give, amen? So I just wanted to remind you of that. It should come up there and you can scan it there to give, amen? And we're going to continue through our worship giving. Thank you, Deacon Terrell.
Happy in Jesus Christ. Happy in Jesus Christ. Happy in Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Happy in Jesus Christ. Happy in Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Happy in Jesus Christ. like me you want a word right so you can hold on to it right waking up with your affirmations and praying so guess what we have a word pastors bringing a word from the Lord so I just want to thank you for being in the right place at the right time for your blessing go ahead and congratulate yourself for making your way here today on this Memorial Day weekend amen so I want to just say a little short, sweet prayer over our pastor. He took a little break, right? Just a short one. So there's no telling what's going to happen up here. So he's re-energized, amen? So I just want to pray for him and thank you for ushering in the spirit that's already here and we're just elevating it together, amen? I just want to say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, bless the man of God that's going to bring your word. Because we want to eat and taste and see what you have for us. So bless him from the top of his head to the balls of his feet. Give him whatever you see fit for him to feed us on this Memorial Day weekend. Lord, we thank you for our pastor, our under-shepherd of this great house of the Lord. And we thank you in advance for using him in the way that you yes, see fit. Yes. We thank you from the depths of our heart for giving us a word that's going to come from you. In your mighty matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen.
we say it one more time. Listen at this. You read the Bible. You read the story. About a blind man. Yeah. That could not. was coming to town. He heard Jesus, Jesus was coming to town. He heard Jesus. He, he heard said, Jesus. lay your hands. Master, master. Lay your hands. Lay your hands. Oh, on me. me. Yes, and we say yes, it together. Yes. Come on, say, Lord, do it.
you to do right now. Right now, right now, Jesus. I'm asking you to do it, Lord. Lord Jesus. Do it for me. Do it for me. Do it for me. I need you to do it, Lord Jesus. Bless, bless, Lord.
I need you right now over my children. I need you right now over my grandsons. I need you right now over my church members. I need you right now over my enemies. I need you right now over my friends. I need you right now over all the people in this world. Right now. We don't stop praising God like God needs to be praised. We want to do it all pretty and everything. But it's okay to get ugly and let people know I just love the Lord. It's okay to get your shadow. It's okay to raise your hand. It's okay just to move. Letting God know it is all right. I lift them up. 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 Just know that we know what weekend this is. This is Memorial Day weekend. And we forget sometimes what the significance is what we think about. We off work. We think about going to go to somebody's house or somebody going to come to our house for barbecues or whatever. But then there's something greater than that. I, I look out in the audience and I see a sister Lula fan, bro, and I know that. She knows the Lord, no matter what she's been through, she knows yeah. the Lord has seen her through. Thank you, Jesus. But today, Reverend Jamise Buford gave you all the responsive readings. She read Joshua, the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 10. But I want to pick up from there and pick up verses 11 through 18. Joshua 4, verses 11 through 18. If you don't mind standing and reading before you as I come before you <clears throat> and giving you the word, Joshua 4 started with verse 11, and it came to pass when all the people were clean passed over, that the ark of the Lord passed over and the priest in the presence of people 
And the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and half the tribe of Manasseh passed over armed before the children of Israel as Moses spake unto them. About 40,000 prepared for war passed over before the Lord unto a battle to the plains of Jericho. On that day, the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all of Israel, and they feared him as they feared Moses all the days of his life. And the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Command the priests that bear the ark of the testament that they come up out of Jordan. Joshua therefore commanded the priest, saying, Come ye up out of Jordan. And it came to pass when the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord were come up out of the midst of Jordan, and the soles of the priest's feet were lifted up unto the dry land, that the waters of Jordan returned unto their place and followed over its banks as they did before. You all may be seated. <clears throat> Ushers, thank you for being on your post. Thank you for your faithful service. You may be seated. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Your word is true. Thank you, Lord. It was created way before me. And I just want to deliver to your people what you have to be said. Please, God, please, please remember us all. This Memorial Day, Lord, we pay tribute. We pay tribute to those in the service of these United States Armed Forces that didn't make it home, that died in battle. We thank you in Jesus' name. And we remember the true battlefield. And we want to give glory to that as well. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank you all today. And with God's word, we want to come before you as the word first started to be given to you during the response to reading. It talked about the Israelites. The time has come for them to cross over. They have crossed over the Red Sea. Now they're crossing over the Jordan River. You know, we think about the Jordan River, you read about it, it's a muddy water, you will read about it too, is that there's something special happening couple times at the Jordan River. But this particular time is getting to the promised land. I want to speak with you for a moment. Who will remember? Who will remember? I, I, I want you to understand that we are in our right minds right now. We are seated before one another. We can look and see what color someone has on. If I ask you all to stand and scan the room, once you sit down, who will remember every face that they viewed upon? My Lord, my Lord. Who remembers everybody's name besides Jesus? Yes, Pastor Howe was given that gift, and I thank God for the gift in knowing people's names and being able to recall, but I know in life's time, who will remember? A woman remembers giving childbirth at that very moment, but once that child has arrived in this world, after years have gone on, who really remembers? Uh, the mother said, I remember that pain. It was 18 hours, 22 seconds, and then they put the minutes between it. I remember. You remember that time. You remember but there's something about after the delivery. That pain has passed by. Amen. Unless you revisit the place once again and you give birth to another child. But Amen. it's something about that first birth because the body is restructured itself to deliver. The second child, they said, come pretty easy because the first child has already come through. And we say, who will remember the very first job that they ever had? Who remembers the first teacher that you ever had? Who remember the pre-K teacher? 
I'm not talking about, you say, I didn't go to pre-K. I stayed at somebody's house. Who remembers that person you were told who kept you when you were a child? In this time of Memorial Day, it's remembering those individuals. Now, when you read about it, it says the personnel of the United States Armed Forces, because it was not only soldiers that died, it may have been people that were stationed when they were attacked and that were killed. So we're remembering those in Arlington, Virginia, you know it is the Arlington National Cemetery. That is where they remember those soldiers whose remains have not been found. Who remembers those that have sacrificed their lives for us that we may have freedom? Today I want to know how many family members are in here that have lost a loved one while in battle. Will you please stand? If anybody has lost a family member who was in battle, will you please stand? We, we see the families that are before us. See, there are those that are amongst us that have family members that lost their lives. We give our honor to you all and to your family members who have served. To God be the glory. But I want to say that they lost their family members, but those that said we gave you, uh, we give you our condolences, who truly remembers those that have gone on as time has passed by besides the family members? We often say that we remember when here at Antioch East, when uh, floors were rocking and stomping and people all came into the house and we just had a good old time. We remember those days, but we say that I remember this deacon or that mother, they would speak the truth, they could sing like an angel. But as time goes by, we pack those memories up. And every once in a while, we'll recall and say, I remember. But I got a question for you. Who will remember you after you're gone? Who will remember that you sung in the choir, that you served on the usher board? Who will remember that you came to the church every Sunday? Who will remember that you were a deacon that could lift a hymn and you could pray to God? I want you to know, as time passes, we will be forgotten. We will be forgotten. This is our time now, but I trust and believe you will be forgotten. I may have pictures of my mother and my grandmother and my dad and everyone else in my life, in my house, but I want to tell you, those are memories. But everybody's not going to remember my mom, my dad, and my grandmother, as they would not always remember you. Joshua them are crossing over the Jordan River, and before, even before the water closes, God has given instruction because not everyone can touch the ark. I want you to understand that. It has to be the priesthood that has to touch the ark and be able to carry it over. Because we read in God's word that any time that someone has touched that ark that was not called by the anointing, they would die right on the spot. Even those that tried to peep in there and see what was going on, they would die on the spot. They are crossing over, and there are those priests that are going about, and as these priests are walking across the Jordan River, there's an instruction given to them. They have to go and get 12 stones while the river has been divided. They're grabbing 12 stones to place in Gilgal. That's where they've been, that's where they're going to stay, and that's where they're going to prepare to take down the Jordan wall, the Jericho wall. They're, they're waiting but God has called them to put 12 stones, one person from each tribe to lay a stone. This is a monument. This is a time to remember, even before we go to war, people would know we have been here. But why would God ask them to take 12 other stones and put it into the Jordan River and build a heap? They're building heaps for those stones to stay safe. We were here, but the interesting thing is God closes the water was able to see the stones, and we know that Jordan is muddy water, we was able to look over and see those 12 stones that lay there. You won't remember. 
when you go across the Jordan River. Because they got a lot of things they're going to go through, but God knows and God remembers. There's a purpose for that. Look and see what God has done. I want you to know today, as we remember those soldiers who have given their lives, God bless America. Amen. God bless these Amen. United States. Amen. See, we don't know what freedom is until the freedom is taken away from Amen. us. Amen. We don't know about those that have left home and don't return. They are, many have listed into the military arm for they won't make it back home. Amen. And we just assume that they will, but that's why we pray over our soldiers. Amen. But I want to talk to you about some other soldiers. I want to talk about you as soldiers on the battlefield. We have had many that have come in the name of Jesus that have stood on the battlefield, that have been knocked down, have been treated any way that you can see that is unbefitting for a person to be treated. There have been those on the battlefield that have been lied on. There are those on the battlefield that have been talked about. Those on the battlefield have given their sweat, blood, and tears. But when it's all said and done, who's going to remember you? We understand that there is a man that will remember us. His name is Jesus. I, I, I want you to know the beauty about all of this going over the Jordan River. And when you make it over, then God closes it up. I want you to know there's going to come a day when God opened up the doors for his children to be able to enter in, and then it's going to close up. You say, who's going to remember you? God will remember you because the word tells me he will say, well done, my faithful servant. Well done. And if your name is called, it's because God remembers. He remembers that you were on the battlefield, and in this battlefield of life, you stood in this battlefield of life. You may have fallen down, but you got up. In this battlefield of life, there's been some death that's coming your way. In this battlefield of life, you had to grab your shield and your buckler. In this battlefield, even everybody in this world does not know your name. Everybody's name will not be in lights while you're walking in this world. But it doesn't matter if your name is in glitter and gold, because I want to tell you about fame. It's only 15 minutes of glory. And when it's all said and done, you move on to the next big star. But I'm going to tell you something about if you're a child of God, you're a superstar every day. You don't have to worry about what man says. God has said you're his superstar. And I want to tell you, when God shines his light on you, when God shows you favor, it ain't nothing nobody can do about it but be able to say, oh, you're too bright. I can't stand looking at you. But I want to let you know, if you're in the army of the Lord, it's Memorial Day. It's Memorial Day to remember all those things that have been sacrificed for you. But I want to talk about the battle on the field. There was one warrior like none other. This warrior came into this world who knew no sin. We often hear about he knew no sin. Jesus was not of sin, but Jesus had to take our sins in order for us to have a way into the eternal life. He came on a battlefield and he stood for 33 years, and it was in his 30th year that he came out. Three years he served to let you know what his ministry is going to be about. He was on the battlefield. Many tried to deny him and don't want to know his name, but his name is Jesus. Many don't want to know his glory, but his name is Jesus. Many don't want to know his purpose, but his name is Jesus. Many don't want to know when he would do anything and everything according to his father's will. He is spinning on the battlefield. He is nailed to the cross. He is saying, God, forgive them. They know not what they do. Yeah. This one individual that's next to him say, Father, remember me in paradise. Yeah. He said, this day you will be with me in paradise. Yeah. If nobody else knows your name, who will remember yeah. your name? It will be Jesus that say, well done, my faithful yeah. servant. Well done. It will be Jesus say, take off your shoes and come on in. It will be Jesus saying the battle is not given to the strong. 
but to him that endured to the end. How many of us are going to endure to the end? How many of us need Jesus? How many want to be remembered by Jesus? How many of you want to be able to say, Lord, I thank you for showing me things. You didn't forget me. Who will remember? It will be the Father which art in heaven. It will be the Son who gave his life. It will be the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. I don't know about you, but I want to be remembered. I don't want to be on this earth doing all of this and then there's nowhere to go when it's all said and done. But there's a place where we never grow old. There's a place where all of us that have been weary, we won't be worn anymore. God got a place for us. But are you going to be ready? Are you going to be ready when he calls your name? And I want to say, will you remember your name? Will you remember when he said, come on, my child. Come on in. Will you be ready? Lady Patricia, I wasn't going to tell her, but I just can't keep it to myself. I wasn't going to tell her, Lady Patricia. And she at home to me is just Patricia. And believe it or not, I'm Michael. And in our house, I want to say that sometimes we get visited just like you all get visited. Sometimes even when we're on a high, the devil want to consume my spirit. But I want to share something with this week. When I heard you sing, Lord, do it. I want to say, I thank God for doing it. I want to share something with you this week. I was going to keep it to myself. I was going to say we're going to just go home and give God the praise. But I just can't keep it to myself. I want to say this week, on Wednesday, right before Bible study, I got a text message. People have been trying to call me. And I see a lady that's trying to call me. And it was my grandson's aunt. And as I was getting the call, it was about six of them. Then I finally got a text. And I read the text right before Bible study. And it said, little Zachary has been admitted into the hospital. I want you to know we need you right now. And Lady Patricia, when she got off of work, she came here and changed for Bible study. And we and our students in Bible study, they asked, why are you still here? I said, I got to finish out this Bible study. And then I could look at my wife. I could tell she was there, but she really wasn't there. I know her mind was worried about her grandbaby, but I was worried about my grandson too. But I knew that God would take care of everything. And as we were sitting there and teaching, and I just kept saying, I got to teach this lesson. And the more I said that, Lady Patricia looking at me and said, Pastor, I understand that, but we got to get out of here early. I said, I understand that too, but I got to finish this Bible study. And then when people were coming in and we started having testimonies, we had one to give praises about her granddaughter, saying God has been good and God has watched over. Then I had another one come in, Sister Jackie come in and say, I want to give God the praises. My daughter was in a car accident, and all four of my grandbabies was in it. But when I heard their voice, I felt good because I knew they were being all right. But then I started thinking about Lady Patricia. She hearing all this good news, but our grandbaby's in the hospital, and I know she's trying to get to him. After Bible study is over, we go home to change out of our cars because we had two cars in place. We got in the car, and as we were moving toward the hospital, we get a call from my Uncle Caleb saying, Mom and Dad, there's no need of you coming because they done transferred and they done mended them into the hospital, and they only allowed two people to see him. I wish you could see Lady Patricia's face. I wish you could see it when she had turned around, and I knew she was full of the spirit. She got in bed and put the cover over her head, and I said, I learned to listen. When a grandmother, a GG, yeah. or a skip mama tells you to move, you better move. Yeah. But when God tells you to be still, yeah. you better be still. Yeah. But I want to tell you, God is good. My grandbaby's been in the hospital since Wednesday up until this morning. Yeah. And we thought he was coming.
coming home yesterday. They say he's still having problems with his breathing. We're in the hospital playing with him. Everything looks good. But when we left him on that Friday night, his oxygen went back down. But then yesterday we were with him. And as we were with him, he said, Papa, I want to come home and ride my bike. Papa, I want you to know that I love you. Gigi, when am I going to go swimming? I want to go to the park. I said, speak that thing in existence. Speak that thing in existence. Speak that thing in existence. And you know what? I was in my study, studying for God's word. We get a call from his mama. Guess what? My grandson is on his way home. It is all of God's word. I give God the praise. I just thank you. God came in, yeah. and when God said it was time to go, it's time to go. And I want you to know, God knew his name. God heard the prayers, but God knows your name, and God hears your prayers. I just want to say, I'm a walking weary land, but I know that God got me. I know that God got you. He got your babies. He got my babies. Guess what? I'm one of his babies, so he got me. And I just want to give some praises. Who will remember? God, I remember. I remember you bringing me up. I remember you watching over me. I remember. I remember who God is. I'm just calling on his name right now. Don't feel sorry for me. What I want you to do, I want you to praise with me. I want to praise God for being the bright and morning star. I want to praise God for being my all in all. I want to praise God for the joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it from me. If he did it for you, he will do it for me. If he did it for me, he will do it for you. Who will remember your name? It will be Jesus. You're soldiers on the battlefield. But I tell you, one day you're going to go down and you won't get back up to that great getting up morning. But I want to say when you go down, make sure you're covered. When you go down, make sure your life is right with Jesus. When you go down, know that you know the man. When you go down, make sure you gave your life to the man. When you go down, know he's going to bring you back up. And when he bring you up, when he bring you up, you're going to be in the kingdom. You're going to be in the kingdom. I want to be in the kingdom. Remember me, God. Remember everyone in this room. Lord, we want to get in. The devil is trying to keep us out. They said there's no God, but there is a living God. His name is Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's our bright and morning star. He's our shelter in the time of a storm. He our God all by himself. I give it to Jesus. Lord, if you're going to do it, do it now. If you're going to do it, do it now. If you're going to do it, do it now. If you're going to do it, do it now. If you're going to do it, do it now. Do it now, Jesus. Do it now. Hallelujah. 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 I just want to say, there's blessings all in this room. If I go over to the left-hand side, you know what God has done for you. There's some blessings in this room. If I come in the middle aisle, you know what God has done for you. There's some blessings in this room. If I come to this aisle, you know what God has done for you. You know what God has done for you. You know what God has done for you. He has blessed you. If I come over here, you know, you know, you know what God has done for you. Behind me, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. You know. 
stop holding back on God. I want to stop holding back on him. I want to get past these bow ties and ties and I want to be tied up in him. I want to do what he has for me to do. I want to release what he has for me to release and I want to pick up what he wants me to pick up. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. going to ask one of my deacons. I know the hymn, and I was getting ready to throw down for you all with it. Remember me. Remember me, Lord. Lord, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. Lord, remember me. One of my deacons coming. I don't care which one you want to showcase right now. I'm coming, grab Go ahead, Deacon Patterson. Remember me. How many of you all need to be remembered? Yeah. How many of you all need to be remembered? Yeah. How many of you all need to be remembered? Yeah. The doors are open. The doors of the church are open. I'm sorry, Minister Wingfield. We thank you, women. Brother Marcus and his beautiful choir. But we need to sing, Remember Me. Yes, Lord. when you were crying on your knees. Yeah. Crying out and asking God to heal my body. Yeah. Lord, deliver my children. Yeah. Lord, help this mind. Help yeah. this heart. God remembers. Yeah. He knows you in your darkest yeah. hours. Yeah. Who will remember when you had nowhere else to go you but to Jesus? Yeah. Who will remember when nobody Come else on, was preacher. working it out yeah. for you yeah. but the Lord? Remember me. Yes, Lord. Remember me. Yeah. Remember yes, me. Lord. Yes, Lord. Before you, before you 
take your seat. I was just thinking about my yesterday when I was in the room with my grandson. Lady Patricia and I was in a head, three balloons. And with those three balloons, we kept worried about he was going to burst and they're going to pop. I went to get Patricia and I something to eat. When I came back, she said, Michael, he's burst two of the balloons. <laughs> he had a blue one. He had a purple one. He had a red. The one that still exists was the red. Amen, amen. But what was also missing, that balloon did not have the string still attached to it. He said, Papa, I want my balloon. And I said, Papa gonna get you that balloon one way or another. <laughs> I lifted him up and placed him on my shoulder. If I had his dad, they had already left for his dad or his uncle, they probably got a little higher. <laughs> but I placed him on my shoulder and I lifted him up and he got that red balloon. Yeah, yeah. And I think about it, we lift each other up yeah. to get that red balloon, which is yeah. Jesus. How pleased our God would be with us. And every time he got the balloon, it kept going up. So the spirit led me to get the string, and I tied a long string with it. And once I tied that string, I said, he can get it on his own now. And every time it went up, he just reached his hand and got the balloon. If you tie your string to Jesus, nobody else has to help you to get it. It's there all by itself. So I said, grab your string. And let Jesus know yeah. that you love him. Father, I stretch my hands to you. Yeah. No other help yeah. I know. Let me hold on to you. Hallelujah. And everything yeah. Yeah. is going to be all right. All right. It's going to be all right. All right. All right. It's going to be all right. 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 Yeah. It's going to be all right. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. Not just what I wanted. Got just what I wanted. Got just what I wanted from the Lord. I got just what I wanted. Come on, Kurt. Got just what I wanted. Yeah, got just what I wanted from the Lord. Well, I got just what I wanted. Got just what I wanted. I'm going to give the final benediction via prayer, and we're going to go out in the vineyard and continue yeah, to hold on to how God is going to remember us. Amen. Lord, bless those and keep us this week. 
as we hold on to the richness of his word. Let us go out and be a light and shine before men so they can see you brighter. In every heart and mind say amen, 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 amen. amen and praise God. Please, for those that are busy with us or anyone else, we would love to say hello. God bless you all. Have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend and be safe in Jesus' name.